What's up badass Black Desert Mobile fans? In this video, I'm gonna go over how I got to 8,000 CP as a 100% free to play player and how you can too. Now I'm not gonna say 8,000 CP is super strong. By all means, some players are at 10,000 CP. However, I am a 100% free to play player and I know that a lot of you are as well. And being free to play can be challenging to keep up with content and the stronger players. If this is your first time on my channel, you are missing out. Be sure to check out the description down below for additional badass Black Desert Mobile content. You won't be disappointed. Before we get into the good stuff, I of course have to quench the doubters as there is always a few. If you purchase anything in Black Desert Mobile, you receive guild mileage, at least from what I've been told. I've made quite a few videos on Black Desert Mobile and not one video will you see me with white pearls or guild mileage. Now I'm going to go over everything on the CP breakdown screen one by one. So this is going to be detailed to help you see where you can help fill the gaps for your own build. The compare CP option hasn't been updated in some time. I have suggested updating this to Black Desert Mobile. So we're going to have to ignore that part. We can't compare 8K CP to 6K CP. But we can get an idea of where I'm at with each. Up first, we have the base family CP, and under that is the Black Spirit. One of, if not the most important way to increase your combat power. As you can see, mine is offering an additional 1300 CP, and my Black Spirit is level 173. If you look at all other sections, the Black Spirit is the second highest behind only the equipment. So aside from your equipment, the Black Spirit is super important. Some ways to level your Black Spirit. The first is the obvious, do your events and dailies, including Merchantry. All of these have the opportunity to give Black Spirit energy to feed your beast. I understand Merchantry takes some time. I am also aware that a decent amount of people do not do it because it takes so much time. And I get it, trust me. But if you're total free to play, then Merchantry is a must. You get so much to help grow your account aside from dark energy, so try to do it as much as possible. Next way to feed the beast is from your boss rushes. Yes, that's right, boss rushes. Progressing boss rushes is super important. When Haddam boss rushes come out, you will need all boss rushes to level 99 anyways, so I have been slowly progressing them a few here and there at a time. Every level offers either black stones for your weapons or armor, silver, or ancient gold coins. Ancient gold coins are one of the biggest ways to feed your black spirit. I have come out with a video about feeding your black spirit the correct way to get the most out of him. I suggest you take a peek at that. Lastly is buying yellows from the market and feeding them to your black spirit. Honestly, I've probably spent about 4 billion silver sniping yellows from the market. Knowing which yellows to buy and feed is also important as well as market fluctuation as sometimes yellow gear is cheaper than at other times. All right, that was a lot about the Black Spirit. Let's move on to the newly added emblem. This bad boy can be acquired from doing Path of Glory. Now the max emblem at the moment is the emblem of Brilliance, which, ad which adds quite a bit of CP. That emblem has a chance to drop from Pog and it is RNG based. You do get a purple one for free com for completing one POG, so I do suggest running POG every day at the highest level that you can. You also receive tokens from POG, and these tokens can be used to enhance your current emblem. The higher the level of the emblem, the more CP, so you want to be leveling this as much as possible until you get it to max level 30. Next, we have the passive skills. These are shared between all characters on your account. The attack speed, crit chance, and move speed are all maxed at level 10. They also do not add any combat power. The AP, DP, and HP ones I have not yet reached max level, and therefore I feed all of these books. So anytime I get them, I feed them right to that. You can get these books from various places such as Node Manager, Merchantry, Farming, Quests, Events, and even the market you can find them sometimes. Every level of one passive skill, either AP or DP, does only add two total combat power. That's right, two. So I, I wouldn't get too worked up with trying to level these skills. Probably one of the slowest ways to increase CP, but it does offer me an extra 108. So, you know, I will take that. Next is knowledge, which is also su super important. It's easy to knock out, but it is a bit time consuming. Luckily, you only have to do it once for your entire account. 
So I do recommend knocking them out as soon as you, new knowledge is opened. Knowledge offers worker stats, CP, HP, even LT on the newest ones in West of Valencia. As you can see, there is hundreds of CP in knowledge. Boss knowledge is also crucial here. Boss knowledge and world boss knowledge are very similar. Obviously, you want to attend as many world bosses as you can for the drops and the boss knowledge. I can honestly say I miss the midday world boss most days, but I too do try to get as many as possible. All boss knowledge is tied together, whether it's world boss or even boss rushes or even the tree and boss that uh, from the guild boss rushes. You have boss knowledge for each individual boss. Then you also have total boss knowledge, both offering CP and HP rewards for every level you increase. Boss knowledge can currently go all the way to level 2000. I'm currently a little over 900, so I have a ways to go there. There is a lot of CP to be gained from here, so I strongly recommend accumulating boss stamps from everywhere possible. Again, Merchant Tree, Talus Shop is a great place, events, dailies, Black Spirit Daily. I get the boss stamps everywhere possible as soon as I can. Next, we have the Passive Pet CP. This is the CP you gain from having either DP or AP on your pets. At the moment, I have three pets with DP on them. So when I have those three equipped, you can see I gained a decent amount of combat power. Only tier five pets can have combat power on them. And to get a T5 pet, you either have to get them from events or combine T4 pets and hope to get lucky and get the stats that you're looking for. Now, DP is not the best option here. However, free to play and beggars can't be choosers. CP is CP at the end of the day, so I will take some more survivability. The pet album also offers some CP. Some pets offer bonuses when you tier them up. Not every pet. Every level will either offer AP, DP, or HP. So accumulate as many different pets and get the levels of each is important as well. Next, we have collections, which is similar to knowledge. It's a one and done, so I recommend knocking them out as soon as they come out. The weekly collection is also very nice for rewards. Aside from the combat power, you do have a chance to get Valk Scrolls, Essence, Gold Coins, Black Stones, all of which help level your character and account. A lot of these can be stockpiled in your storage to, pre to prepare for when new classes or collections release, which usually go together. You can also deselect the Feed Black Spirit option when rolling coins if you need specific gear. Usually one roll of 10 will get you what you need. Then you could turn it back on and roll while feeding. Moving on to base character CP, the first option here is character stats by level. This CP is gained every time you level up your character, so obviously you want the highest level you can achieve. Every level is about 10 CP, so I'm at level 73, that would add an additional 20 CP at max level. Next is the skill training level. This is an aggregate of all of your skills that you feed to your family skill training. I recommend feeding your purple skill books first to the respective areas, AP, DP, and HP, or deselecting them if you're trying to stockpile. Feeding these books levels up your family skill training. Mine is currently 131 level, offering 55 AP and DP and 540 HP. You can get these skill books many ways, farming being the most popular. You can get them from Merchant Tree, Node Manager, Events, and Dailies as well. All right, moving on to the biggest way to increase your combat power, and that is through your gear. The first option here is outfits. The best outfits are 25 out of 25 AP and DP for both weapons and armor outfits. And that's what you want to go for. Unfortunately, like everything in BDM, outfits are RNG based. Therefore, it's going to take a lot of luck to get the best stats on here. I recommend going for at least yellows. If you have extra outfits and want to go for a couple more attempts to get at least a plus 20, then great. 25 on both would be very difficult. I would consider yourself lucky if you got plus 20 on either. You could obtain outfits a few ways from a wet events when they do offer them here and there. The easiest way is to craft them yourself through your camp. Now, I know what your thoughts are. Are here are going to be next and that's about the breath of life's and creations 
Well, I farm them the same way most do, which is by gathering. You can obtain them as well from your node manager. However, I never go that route as it's not very fruitful for the time taken. The second best route is farming them from sauce and pouches at one of the locations that they drop. They have the opportunity to drop both life and creations. If you farm there for a week, you could end up with a few hundred of each. The base outfits offer five AP and DP. Even if you get the outfit to yellow, it goes to a minimum of 15 out of 15, which is a 20 CP increase, and it is relatively easy to do and free, so make sure you do it. So if you're looking to increase your CP, the quickest way you're going to do it is through your gear and the best available gear, which is currently the red gear. If you cannot craft or obtain, then I recommend going for Jin, Grunnels, Liberto, or Rosar. You also want to awaken the gear and take advantage of the gear resonances, which I will go over here in a second. So I currently have Jin gear with the exception of my helmet, which is the red Schultz. I have them all awakened and I am taking advantage of the Tet gear resonance until I can level up my armor to pen, which is the next goal. A big factor in level up gear past 40 is Valk scrolls. I typically use the 10% ones until try, for Tet and above, I use 50% scrolls. That is my own preference. I feel it's it's easy to get to try with 10% Valk scrolls, and it's best to save those 90 million scrolls, 90 million silver scrolls for the harder levels. Best way to obtain gear is from events, Shakatu, farming, crafting, and buying from the market. Accessories offer some solid CP increases as well. There is resonances with accessories and enchants. I do recommend going for all orange accessories, even if they're not at plus one. The resonance is worth it. You can obtain accessories from events, world bosses, but good luck there, guild, bo guild boss rushes, good luck there again, and nightmare mode. I have actually seen a few of those drop in nightmare mode. Lastly, you can get them from the market. The prices have come down pretty drastically. You can get a, most orange accessories for around 1,000 BP, which is, you know, through two, three months ago, those were going for two, three, 4,000 BP. Next is the relics. We have two of them now, both offer CP, but more importantly is the branch damages bonuses going from 10% for yellow to 20% for orange relics. I would try to get orange relics if possible, I also prefer the relics that give both AP and DP with the same and either AAL or Labrev. That is my personal preference. You can obtain these relics from events, uh, from, free, from feeding relic fragments. I would, however, save your fragments for now as red relics should be coming soon. So the more relics you have to roll for red, the better. Alchemy stones are super important, and oftentimes the ones that give you combat power is not the best option. Typically, you either have the Stone of Luck or PvP stones equipped. Only for progression do you have the CP stones equipped. The best stone is the Sushi Stone. Crit damage if you're not maxed on crit. If not, I like the Black Spirit Rage one. You do want them to be at max level for enhancement bonus of plus three. You can also obtain these from events as well as Alchemy Stone Fragment Exchange. I am saving these as well in preparation for Alchemy Stone Awakening. I recommend saving all red stones. It doesn't matter which one they are, just save them all for when Awakening comes, Alchemy Stone Awakening comes. Crystals are another way to increase CP and branch damages. I suggest all AP crystals for most classes and branch damages of either AAL, Labrev, or Ahib. Now, I wouldn't get too caught up with crystals. These are not a huge CP increase. Uh, we're talking like one to two per stone level. So if you're going from yellow to orange, it's gonna be like one to two CP. If you're going to orange to, to red, it's gonna be like one to three maybe if you get lucky. You do want the best ones equipped, more so for the branch damages than the CP. You can get your hands on these from events like the one we have going on right now, the bingo one. You can also get better crystals by fusing them. Best ways to get crystals for free is merchantry, events, and dailies. All right, enchants. These can be a serious pain sometimes, as I'm sure most of you know. These require a lot of residue and essence and oftentimes fail or give low stat bonuses. 
I recommend going for combat power on enchants where possible. I do like Lebrev on the boots and the helmet, and Ahib on the gloves. And even crit hit damage is a solid option for the armor. For accessories, it's the same story here. All of them give a, give a CP option, so that's what I go with. How do you get your hands on Residue and Essence? Same as the rest, events mostly. For Residue, you can get this from feeding your Black Spirit different gear. Offers different Residue amounts. Essence is the same thing, but with accessories, which is much harder to come by. Next, we have Lightstones. Red Lightstones just released, and if you don't have them yet, you are missing out. They can offer as much as 45 CP for each one, which is an additional 180 CP you could get. That is double what orange lightstones offer if you went with all CP on them. The best ways to get lightstones is through events. After that, you have to try your luck with RNG with the lightstone fragments. I would recommend saving any fragments until Haddam releases as you will want to feed lower level lightstones. At the moment, I only combine the ones I farm from field and events. You can also obtain light stones and relics from ancient ruins, as well as dust from al for alchemy stones. Alright, lastly we have extra benefits. First is the bonus effects. This is obtained by increasing your combat power. Every few levels they offer different bonuses. Some of them are combat power bonuses, which can be a total of 500 CP. That's at max level, which requires your base CP to be at 6,000, which is uh, 400 CP. So you're going to need to be at about 6,400 6, CP in order to receive all of the combat power bonus effects. So 6,400. With gear resonance, it is important to go for the highest one you can. So if your gear is at all try, I would go for all tet before taking weapons to pan and armor to tet, etc. With accessories... Grade Resonance, I would go for all orange accessories. Red accessories are not worth it at the moment, and they will become easier to get in the next month or two. And then the Resonances might become more viable. I do not have any accessory resonance bonuses, as the first level requires all accessories to be at plus three minimum, which I do not have yet. I am working towards that. All right, so that covers everything under the CP breakdown section. I've gone over my full build, which is always in the process of upgrading and growing. I hope this has helped some of you understand what to go for, where to get it, and how to do it. If you've learned something or enjoyed the video, please smash that like button. You know I appreciate it. And with that being said, I will see you next time.